Hey everyone, this is Blanca. And this is Ben Callahan. And we are from Group One Crew, and we are actually married as well. Some people might not know that, so I should add it in the video. And um, we are so excited to be part of the Skillet Book Club. This is our first video with you guys, and um, we're really, really excited about it. We're happy to be a part of this and um, be joining you guys, staying accountable in the Word, and just growing um, in, in all of this together. So it'll be really fun. And uh, we have the days uh, 2.38 through 2.44. So and if it's you want to follow along. It's the youversion.com. Um, it's the reading the whole Bible plan in one year. So that's where we're reading from, days 238 through 244. So that's a little bit about us. So here we go. We'll jump right into it. Well, in reading these scriptures for uh, these few days, we saw that there was kind of an underlying um, kind of subject that we wanted to share with you that really resonated with us and kind of what we've been through in the last year. Um, and that was just trials and tribulations, going through hard times. Um, what does the word say about uh, how to really deal with going through hard times and um, tying that into the story of Job? Because I said, I think if anywhere in the Bible you can kind of get a hands-on um, view of what it, it was like for someone to go through a really tough time and how they dealt and, and got through would be the story of Job. P.S. If you hear any snoring in the background, that is our little bulldog. Let's show them here so you don't, you don't get distracted. But he's asleep. Diesel. Oh. Hey, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll be uh, joining us in this as well because he does not go anywhere <laughs> without us. He's always next to us. So hopefully it's not too distracting. So let's start off with um, a scripture that we pulled out. I want to say, I like to read um, from the message translation. It keeps it fun. It keeps it different. Um, I personally, to keep it real, get a little lost with the these and thous and the thouest and thouest most. And um, so the message just kind of keeps it real, keeps it in my terminology. So if you sound like, hey, that, if you say to yourself, that doesn't really sound like what I'm used to reading, mm -hmm. that's why it's the message. But let's give it a shot and um, you can follow along if you'd like. We're going to start reading in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 through 7. Yes, this is from day 238. And it says, All praise to the God and Father of our Master, Jesus the Messiah, Father of all mercy, God of healing counsel. He comes alongside us when we go through hard times. And before you know it, he brings us alongside someone else who is going through hard times so that we can be there for that person just as God was there for us. We have plenty of hard times that come from following the Messiah, but no more so than the good times of his healing comfort. We get a full measure of that too. Um, I think that's just such a beautiful picture of, um, of being able to, to say, yeah, we went through hard times, but through that, God was able to use me to speak into someone else's life. And that's what your story, your voice, your testimony is all about, is the things that you know, we're all in this life going to go through some hard times and, and different tribulations, different things, whether it's uh, losing someone that you loved or um, abuse, growing up in an abused home or um, getting in a, in a car accident and just all these different things that happen to each and every one of us. You know, we each have our story and the things that we've been through. But God says that through those hard times, he's going to use them to speak into someone else's life and to use you the way that God was there for you so that you can be there for them. And um, I just think that's such a, a beautiful thing that to take something that's so ugly or maybe something in us that we wish not to share with anyone, but that God can take that and use it for the good and use it to bless someone else's life and make it beautiful. Um, is just a great picture to me of, you know, how taking something that's so hard can be used for the good of God's glory. So, um, and following that scripture, it says, when we suffer for Jesus, it works out for your healing and salvation. 
if we are treated well, given a helping hand and encouraging word that also works to your benefit, spurring you on, face forward, unflinching. Your hard times are also our hard times. When we see that you're just as willing to endure the hard times as to enjoy the good times, we know you're going to make it, no doubt about it. So I feel like hard times in your life, um, they're there to strengthen you, to make you better, to test your faith. I, I really feel if you've never gone through anything in your life, then you haven't experienced what it means to draw near to God, um, to have your faith tested and through that still hold on to his promises and his truth. Um, and something through all of this that I will touch, in, uh, touch on uh, at the end of, as well is that I feel like our emotions are so fickle and so, so all over the place, especially as a girl. Um, he can tell you best. <laughs> but uh, I, I feel like my emotions and my feelings are always up and down. They're like a roller coaster. You know, you go through hard times. And in my life, I recently lost my father um, in November. And I thought my world was literally going to crash, like fall apart. I had never dealt with a loss in my life. That was the first person that was really close to me that I had lost and and I remember feeling like man God why did this have to happen why when there was so much that you wanted to do in his life he was living for you you know he was making such an impact you know why did this have to happen and we don't always have the answers but through our emotions they can always be up and down and they can be like a roller coaster but what stays the same is the Lord he is consistent he is faithful and he is true and he never changes and um, in the scripture, it, it really shows, you know, that God, um, going back, let me see here, that when you're willing to endure hard times, that it shows us as believers, it, it, it encourages us to show that you're going to make it, um, and it gives us hope. So being able to stay strong in, in those hard times, it really brings hope to others, and um that's encouraging to know. Read the next scripture because okay. I really like this one. Day, day 239, if you're following along, 2 Corinthians 1, um, verse 20 through 22, again in the message. It says, whatever God has promised gets stamped with the yes of Jesus. In him, this is what we preach and pray. The great amen, God's yes, and our yes together, gloriously evident. God affirms us, making us a sure thing in Christ putting his yes within us. By his spirit, he has stamped us with his eternal pledge, a sure beginning of what he has, of what he is destined to complete. And when I read that verse, I automatically think of the verse that says, what he started in you, he is faithful and just to complete. Um, so if you have a dream on the inside of you and you might be sidelined right now, or you might be going through something that isn't really uh, in correlation with your dream, and you're like, God, what's going on? Um, never lose hope and never lose sight on the fact that what he started in you, his own word, he promised that he is faithful and just to bring that to fruition in your life and to complete it in your life. Um, take it from someone who thought I was at the end of my rope, and God came full circle and said, no, it was just all preparation for this new season. So um, hold fast to the faith. Um, Stay in the word, stay prayed up, and stay encouraged, and never lose hope. If you lose hope, it's a scary battle, um, but always cling to the hope that Christ has given you and know that in time, in first full circle, it's going to come back around to you. So, so 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. So we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside it often looks like things are falling apart on us, on the inside, where God is making new life, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. These hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times, the lavish celebration prepared for us. There's far more there, there's far more here that than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today and gone tomorrow, but the things we can't see now will last forever. I think that's the good news through all of this is that um, you know, things are temporal. You know, the things here are, like that verse said, they're here today and gone tomorrow. But the eternal hope that we have in Christ is um, never failing and never fading. Um, it's a reality whether we feel Him 
um, every day or we don't feel him, he's there. Um, whether we see him in our day and uh, we don't see him, he's there and his promises are, um, are there in our life. And knowing that um, he is going to make good um, on his promise to us to never leave us, to never forsake us. Um, you know, he's with us through it all, through the thick and the thin. And I think that um, tying all this back into Job, we, we read, I, I believe, like 14 or 15 chapters of Job this week. Um, and we got to the end of Job's life. Um, Job is very misunderstood. Uh, the book is very controversial, but um, uh, getting to the end of Job, um, I believe it's chapter 42, verse 16 and 17. Job lived on another 140 years, living to see his children and his grandchildren, four generations of them. Then he died an old man full of life. Um, God's promises came full circle in the life of Job, so much to where in, uh, in some earlier verses. Yeah, um, I love this here. Okay, you and read then, it, you read it. Okay, um, in the earlier verses. One through six. I think this is so important in the story of Job um, to read these verses because sometimes they're uh, read over and maybe are, are not taken um, fully from the context of the story of Job. And it says, I babbled on about things far beyond me, Job answered God. I'm convinced you can do anything and everything. Nothing and no one can upset your plans um, or God's plans. You asked, who is this muddying the water, ignorantly confusing the issue, second guessing my purposes? And I admit, I was the one. Um, and then he goes on, you know, to say, forgive me. I'll never do that again, I promise. I'll never live on crust of hearsay or crumbs of rumor. Um, and again, just tying it into knowing that your emotions, your insecurities, your perception on life is different from how God views it. Your emotions are up and down. The way you view things might be good one day and, and down in the dumps the next because of your situation and what you're going through. But God remains consistent through it all. And even when Job couldn't see it, when he was suffering in, in his sick bed or losing the things that he loved all around him, um, God shows in the end that his faithfulness was still going to be there through it all. And um, he blessed Job's life and he lived on 140 years with double. beautiful, yeah, beautiful yeah, daughters double. and family. And um, he got double of everything he had before. And that was God's plan that whatever the enemy tried to take away from Job, that God was going to work it together for the good. Of his go. life. And everything works together for the good. Of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Thanks for Thanks listening. Thanks for listening. We'll Take care, you guys. Soon.